I'm Matt Paris Luca. Um, packing right now. It is. It's a little bit after one in the morning. Um, Friday the uh, Saturday, Saturday the twenty third of July. Um, I'm packing right now for a week long missions trip to Jamaica. Um, I'm taking this camera with me, and I'm gonna film everything I see from my point of view. Um, you know, I want to just give it unfiltered and just let everyone see what a missions trip down to Jamaica is like. <laughs> nice moves, Carrie. <laughs> Van was bottoming out and stuff. I was like, "Wow, these are like Pennsylvania roads." Um, again, though, just seeing what you know, it's just funny or sad, whatever. I was thinking, I wonder if you buy these houses or if you just put them up wherever you want, because it looked like shacks. I'm thinking, you know, who would buy this? You know, why, and why would you put those pieces of plywood there? You know, why would you put it closer to the beach if you wanted to? You know, I was just really amazed that uh, obviously there's not any codes or anything going on. Seeing the, you know, being a construction officer, you're just seeing the wire nest of wires is everywhere. I'm like, my goodness, I can't believe how dangerous it is for these people, and they don't even know it probably, you know? Sunset on the cliffs over in the grill. It feels like it's starting to rain. We just got our room. We're the only room that has the fridge among us. And then check out this view. 
check this out. This is right outside of our window. We got the beach, or the uh, cliffs and the ocean right there. This is incredible. We are on our way right now from um, Negril to Savannah Lamar. That's the place where um, we'll be most of the week, um, Hope Baptist Church in Savannah Lamar. Um, this is our first day we're going to be teaching Sunday school and then church. Uh, Pastor Bill is going to be leading the Sunday school service and then I believe Pastor Greg will be doing the main service at the church. Um, we're a little bit late this morning, um, so I'm just trying to get there right now. Um, although we're also on Jamaica time, like we get there at 10, we might not start till 10.30, they just start whenever, so we'll see what it's like when we get there. You guys can go in front of me. Yeah. This is inside Hope Baptist Church. This is where we'll be working most of the time. No, because we're running this in a way that it's not supposed to be run to get sound out. Don't worry about that. That's fine. I, can, I have some others. Oh, yeah, let me see if I can play anything in here. Right now, the sound system isn't working, so it looks like Rachel may have to just use her guitar for all of our music, so there'll be a lot riding on her. And, and Chris, Chris will be playing the drums, of course. And the, let's see what you got. Yeah. We've heard such good reports back from the people that went before us. So we know what to expect. Um, it's pretty neat to see, like to see it in person is way different than hearing about it. Um, and, I, and I've said this a hundred times, I've told people, I got in trouble for it, saying uh, we get more out of being here than I think we can ever give. I mean, these people are, it's just genuine and, and it's a very neat opportunity for us more so than I don't know if we can ever give them enough, you know. So that's what I noticed the most. Oh, what about family? Yeah, what about job? You know, these are the things that we're we wrestling with. Every day. Bill and I worked on the with the adults for the Sunday like Bible study time or Sunday school time uh, and that was wonderful like that was a wonderful experience uh, we got to have some personal time with a, a few of the members of the church and they're great like I feel already connected to a few of the parents in the church so. time to leave day one um, we'll be back tomorrow it is hot I'm so hot and tired. Thirsty. Oh, thirsty, yeah. 
I thought for the first service, for uh, the technical difficulties and everything we had, things went pretty well. And uh, looking forward to a great week. Hopefully, we'll get the sound system up and working, and should be good. We've got a whole bunch of bread here. Um, Rachel's bringing some jelly. We've been making a whole bunch of PB and J sandwiches for VBS tomorrow. Um, I think we're trying to make like 250 to 300. So what's going in the health kit? Yeah. Um, I think we've got what books, books, soap, soap shampoo, shampoo, toothpaste, toothpaste, toothbrush, uh, washcloth, bag, washcloth. Um, that's, I think that's about it. How many are we making? Three hundred and twenty-five. Tomorrow we are doing first day of VBS. We're going to staff in the morning. Um, we're going to be there by nine. Me, Mackenzie, Lisa, and Renee, we are leading tomorrow's session. We are going to be talking about the gold color of the book. Um, we're doing the Wordless Bible for our VBS lesson this year. Um, Monday, day one, we're talking about gold, and that's heaven. Day two, we're talking about darkness, which is sin that separates us from God. Day three, we're talking about red and cleanliness, which is red is Jesus' blood, which he spilt um, for us as a bridge. And then day four, Thursday, is going to be green, which is growth as a Christian. I was just able to get a hot shower for like 30 seconds. It was awesome. This is a good start to the day. It's going to be a good day now. You're missing him. Yeah, it looks like one of those movies. Yeah. I got it. <laughs> that was awesome. Oh wow, we taught today. So, and the teaching I think went really well. The kids seemed to pay attention. Um, it was fun. I think that, like you know how when you're excited to go somewhere and like you build it up in your head and then you go and it's so fun but it's like not as much fun? That didn't happen. <laughs> I mean like, like I've been building up in my head for a year and like just remembering the church and all the kids and the people and stuff and I came today and I just like, it just, it was exactly what I thought it was going to be. Like, I was just, it was great. It was good to be back. It was exciting. I didn't really know what to expect, but the kids were really receptive, and they were actually really respectful. I mean, they listened to everybody, and they were pretty quiet, and um, it was really good. I enjoyed myself. Some of the Jamaica boys tried to teach me some dance moves, but a white girl can't dance, so um, I think they just thought it was funny. But then I taught them some dance moves. Before we get started, Matt, I just got to tell you that Renee totally underplayed her dancing abilities. I mean, when she was doing the lawnmower and the Q-tip, oh, it was just it was just a sight to behold. I definitely showed those Jamaicans how to dance. Can you talk about Pastor Bill's dancing abilities? Not so much. Not so much. Um, we really prefer that he doesn't dance. Well, normally we just miss row by row, but that's usually when we're passing stuff out. 
And so today I thought, hey, we're not passing anything out. I'll just let the kids go. You know, you're dismissed. And, you know, in America, they get up, they leave, and that's it. I said, you're dismissed, and they all sat there. I said, you can go, and they all sat there. Nice! That was great. Did you see how they just left when we said? See you tomorrow, guys. What's that five? What? What's that five? Hasta mañana. Hasta mañana. <laughs> we just got to Froome um, about half an hour to an hour earlier. Um, you can see that tent up there. I guess we were supposed to put that up, at least that's what we were told we were going to put that up. So it's already up. Um, we've never been here before. The white building, that's Pastor Wright, um, the pastor of Hope Baptist Church. That's his home. So. I guess we'll just see how it goes. This is uh, all of our first time being here, so. I have no idea what to expect. I know that we are going to be in the pastor's front yard of his house, and um, he is trying to do a church plant here in Froome, so we're not really sure what um, is going to happen. How far away is it? On our way to a mysterious field in a town we've never been in to play soccer. So we have nothing to do for an hour and a half. And at first we're just like, oh man, we could still be chilling back at the hotel or going over our lessons plans, but, um, you know, God would just really use us. He, uh, there was a lot of neighborhood kids around, um, and we went down to a field, like a st street down, um, and we played football or soccer for like, oh my goodness, like an hour and a half. I was completely dead. I must have run at least a mile. I was, it's the best workout I've had oh. in like three years. I was completely drenched, but it was awesome. It was absolutely the highlight of the night. It was fantastic. Um, we made a lot of, lot of awesome kids. It's so cool. There was like six of us that were playing and then like 10 Jamaicans and we're just, it was really cool. Oh! Yes, Lord, I thank you for this time that we can come and gather in your name and uh, have some fellowship here. I ask you to bless this food our bodies, Lord, and we'll thank you and praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you very much, Pastor. Oh, you identify. Um, it was really, really awesome just seeing people from around the town there just like gathering towards the music. We had it real loud. And. You know, they just like gravitated toward it, and probably like 50 people were just like lining the street outside the pastor's house, just all listening and then listening to Pastor Bill's message. It was it was really cool. I really enjoyed it. Um, you know, it was a good night. Uh, what I want to share with you for today for our devotions is found in the book, uh, The Hole in Our Gospel by Richard Stearns. On page 68 it says, um, my colleague Sam Kamelison, an Indian pastor and evangelist who served with World Vision for decades, helped me see the Great Commission in its most clear-cut terms. He said the Lord's command to go out and make disciples is a direct invitation to join God in what He's doing, a call to action. Speaking to each of us, God is saying, you, me, let's go. We have work to do and it's urgent. Join me. How amazing to see our participation in the kingdom work this way as God's partners. And if we really are partners with him, then it follows we're not to stand by looking into the sky and casually waiting for Christ's return. No, we're to go about the master's business, carrying the good news through our words and deeds, thereby ushering in the kingdom of God. When Christ returns, it will be to complete the work that we, his followers, have begun in his name. He will then make whole that which we've accomplished only in part. 
N.T. Wright in his wonderful book, Surprised by Hope, described our role in God's plan this way. But what we can and must do in the present, if we are obedient to the gospel, if we're following Jesus, and if we are indwelt, energized, and directed by the Spirit, is to build for the kingdom. This brings us back to 1 Corinthians 15:58 once more. What you do in the Lord is not in vain. You're not oiling the wheels of a machine that's about to roll over a cliff. You're not restoring a great painting that's shortly going to be thrown on the fire. You're not planting roses in a garden that's about to be dug up for a building site. You are, strange though it may seem, almost as hard to believe as the resurrection itself, accomplishing something that will become, in due course, part of God's new world. Every act of love, gratitude, and kindness, every work of art or music inspired by the love of God and delight in the beauty of His creation, every minute spent teaching a severely handicapped child to read or to walk, every act of care and nurture, of comfort and support for one's fellow human beings and for that matter, one's fellow non-human creatures, and of course, every prayer, all spirit-led teaching, every deed that spreads the gospel, builds up the church, embraces and bodies holiness rather than corruption, and makes the name of Jesus honored in the world. All of this will find its way through the resurrecting power of God into the new creation that God will one day make. That is the logic of the mission of God. This mission of God is now our mission, and the whole gospel, the good news, is born out of God's love for us and ours for Him. That love, when demonstrated to the world through acts of kindness, compassion, and justice, is revolutionary. And when we become the agents of it, we make credible the message of a Savior who transforms men and women for eternity. We just dropped half the team off in Froome. Um, the rest of us, us, I think it's like seven of us, we are on our way to Savannah Lamar at Hope Baptist Church where we're going to have the uh, teen ministry and me and Chris will play outside with the kids. We all picked our own, our own day. Like I, Job, I've been reading Job a lot. It's been coming up a lot in my life, so I wanted to talk about Job. Um, I think Ken's picked James. I'm not sure what Lisa did, but we all had like our own topic in mind this year of what we wanted to talk about. So instead of doing like a, an actual program or a book, we picked something that is meaningful to each of us. It was a lot of fun. We played soccer and kicked the ball around and played every variation of tag that we could think of. So we were just running around the entire time. Um, just keep them busy. The girls, they had a great night, they said, in the uh, teen room, teen in the church, talking with the teens. Um, of course, me and Chris just had a blast with the little kids outside. That's just always fun. Um, and then we went to Fromm to pick up, the, uh, pick up everyone else, and that was just awesome. Like, as soon as we pull up, they're just playing some music. We just jump in, and we're just singing with them, and Pastor Wright actually comes up between Chris and I, and he's dancing. That was fun. It's kind of crazy. This week's already kind of half over. We already, we only got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday left. It's, it's just flying. It's a blast. I'm completely exhausted. Every bone in my body is sore. So I'm going to get a good sleep tonight. Off to the bus for another day of filming. Um, another day of VBS. Today is Wednesday. So we're going to be doing the salvation message today. Um... Hopefully it'll be good. I'm just, right at this point, I am exhausted. I'm so tired. Uh, every joint in my body aches, but can't really complain because I'm, it's fantastic down here. So, um, here's to another day in Jamaica. A tire just blew up underneath my leg. It really hurt. It hit the, uh, the hump here. Oh, yeah, thank you. Get a picture of that. That's beautiful. And then, uh, and uh, then we pulled over. Right now they're assessing it. I think it's the inside tire. So we're going to have to take off the outside tire, replace the inside tire. Last time this took about an hour. Oh, wait. I think a piece just came off. Oh. No tire? Are we good? Okay. We're good? Yeah, well, the inside one's loose. We can make it there. Oh god. Is it gonna make it <laughs> no, It'll just hurt a little bit, but we'll make it there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. 
the inside one. We were head. just talking about Jill, a bug. you're not it's having luck good. with this tire back here. Oh, I'm trying to break. I love the guy. It's like Lee. It's like Delta. It's like Yeah, yeah, we'll be there as soon as we can. Alright. Okay, so we broke down on the uh, side of the road, um, going to VBS and SAV. Um, it's probably about 8.30 in the morning. Um, about, it's going to be close to 100 degrees, at least like 95 degrees. It's pretty hot. I feel like I'm roasting out here, but... Just blew a tire, so we're working on it right now. Hopefully, we'll get back up on the road soon and uh, get out to VBS for the morning. I have no idea where we are going right now. I hope you don't get killed. Sell it for thirty dollars a bottle. I don't know where this will like you to have that. Not good. Not my favorite. But. Just tried my first piece of what is it? Sugar cane. Sugar cane. Sugar cane is gross. No. Yes, it's very gross. It's, not it's disgusting. Uh, that's my niece. I think it tastes like. Corn, like, yeah, I think it tastes like sugar water. Like corn syrup. Corn. We did the church late today because one of our tires blew on the bus, which set us back an hour. Um, so we got to the church an hour late, and Pastor Wright was there and already had the kids singing and praising Jesus. And, and um, but there were quite a few kids in the church, so we had to hustle, which um, just to get moving and get going and. Um, we, we had a lot of help from the team today. Our memory verse from Monday. Ready, John 3, 16. One, two, three. Today, in my opinion, was the peak of the Bible school because it talks about salvation and talks about what it means to put Jesus in your heart and how to, uh, you know, accept him into your life and really follow him. And all those other days were leading up to it. So I think this today was the peak of it and it really went well. about to head out we're going to be doing half the team in Landilo doing VBS and the other half in SAV doing the teen girls ministry um, me and Chris will be outside with the kids again so um, you know it's just me a lot of playing with kids all right we're at SAV now Chris and I are gonna have to entertain the kids in the mud I guess that's kind of gonna suck Hey guys, Clyde Thompson. You guys want to play this? No. Yeah.
driver dropped us off at SAP. He's waited for us there, and then uh, the people, uh, the girls, all came, and there's about 10 girls, and uh, they had their lesson with uh, other girls in our group. And then uh, outside was uh, little boys and girls, and we played tag, every kind of tag you can imagine. And uh, we just ran around. We also played soccer. And I uh, just messed around with the kids, trying to keep them out of the church while the girls were discussing. And they had very deep conversations in there, and uh, I'm really glad they got to form close-knit relationships as well. We're playing kickball right now. My team is beating Chris's team, but it is awesome, especially because they're losing. So that's always fun. We're the wild dogs, and they're the pirates. All right, guys, get over in position. Get over in position. All right, Haricia, you're up. Um, tomorrow's the last day of VBS, and then we'll be going to our half to Sav Lamar again tomorrow night, and the other half to Landilo again. And that'll be the last day with the kids, so, you know, it's going to be pretty sad. I, I just love those kids. They are, they are absolutely amazing. They really are. They're great kids. Um, you, know, you can just see where their heart's at. They, they're in such an impoverished area, yet they have so much joy, and you can see them. And I wish, I wish I could capture that on video, their joy. I'm trying to as best I can, but even this can't quite express what it is, so... You know, it's really something I think everyone should try to do something like this. But, um, one more day. Pulling up right now, we're almost there. Um, at the end of today, we're going to pass out the health kits that Mackenzie put together. That's going to be really chaotic. What do you guys think when you see the color green? I think of things that are green. Someone from the Bible by the name of Timothy. Wait a minute, let's pick somebody. Who is going to play Timothy? When we ask Jesus into our heart, we know like this much. We're like a little baby. And guess what? Some of those letters became parts of our Bible. First and second Timothy are books in the Bible. But all you have to do is we're going to give you some markers. Alright, so we just had them do their, um, the bags. That was their craft for today, and that's what they'll be um, putting their health kits into. So that's going to be insane, trying to get them to exit when we're giving them those. So hopefully it turns out well, though. Ooh, that was rough. <laughs> I saw it, talked to uh, Pastor Ray a little bit today, and you could just see the frustration is, you know, there's nobody saying thank you, everybody's just fighting for it, you know, it's kind of survival of the fittest, and, and you could just see his frustration, like, guys, you know, we got enough for everybody, you're going to get it, just take your turns, relax, and maybe it's a culture thing, I'm not sure, but it uh, um, felt more like security than, you know, as a, a, doing a missions trip, it's for like, you know, stay back, more like UN stuff, you know, it's kind of, you know, uh, anyway, everybody got their stuff and we made it out safe and uh, it was a unique experience there. Um, I really didn't have much time to like soak it up that like it was happening. Um, but like every once in a while, like I had this one, it was a mom and her son and he was probably three. And the our team was like moving him along and the woman like didn't want to go and I was like, what's, what's the hold up, you know? And she like made her son say thank you to me, and that was really touching. Um, and I, I think 
you know, some of them it was just routine. They really didn't understand maybe what was in it yet. Um, whenever, whenever like all the kids finally had went through, we saw some of the kids on the side like opening theirs up and like looking through it, and like some of them were like, oh, you know, um, it's it it was great. It was good. We went to Rick's, um, a couple, like two miles down the road. It's a tourist attraction, it's cliffs you can jump off. Um, Greg, Chris, uh, Ange Diefenderfer, Pastor Bill, they all jumped off. Um, I did the middle one. Um, it's really cool. I wish the water wasn't salty because it is absolutely beautiful, but the water just burns going into your nose. But it is such an adrenaline rush jumping off those cliffs. It's awesome. It's a pretty cool display of just, you know, God's beauty, so. I'm gonna go try to pet the wild dog. Come here! Come here! Uh, come here, puppy! Dang it! Really wanted to pet it. Woo! I'm petting a wild dog. It was hard today to leave because I know I won't see them until next year, probably. Um, but I know that I know that I prayed for them a lot last year, and um, that I in one way or then or another got to keep in touch with them just a little bit. Um, it just seems like the week flew and it wasn't long enough. God made a place in my heart for Jamaica and every time I come here I just remember, I remember how lucky I am and how much how much there is to be done in the world and it's just it's a lot of fun too it's sad it's sad when you come down because you only have a week with them and you'd really like to see an improvement but you know you just come down and plant the seed and just put it in god's hands and let him take it from there Well, I've never been outside of the United States, well, Canada, Woo. but <laughs> I just felt like God was pulling on my heart to go on this mission trip to Jamaica. I mean, it's a whole, it gives you a whole different perspective, and it's definitely been opening up my eyes. Um, so I would encourage anyone to try it, um, to go, and I guess a lot of people feel discouraged, and maybe some reasons why they don't go is because they may not feel like they have enough money, or they're scared, and you know, other reasons that we've talked about beforehand, but I would just, I would encourage anyone to go because if you're supposed to go, God will definitely provide and I mean, he's, he's with you every step of the way, so there's nothing to, nothing to worry about. It's always strange to come to a new country, uh, someplace you've never been, asked to do something you've never really done before. All the sights and sounds and experiences, it can be overwhelming and, and they're all handling it pretty well. Uh, just getting along together really well. Uh, it always amazes me how God brings together the team and the chemistry that evolves. And we get along well, we're willing to do whatever it takes. And uh, I, I think they've all done very well in that area. And wait, did you see the... Uh, I think it's sad. I mean, you never know. You look around and see this beautiful weather and you see, and that's great and it's the scenery and stuff like that. But the thing I'm gonna miss the most is the people because uh, Jamaican people, I haven't met one person here that has been uh, mean. Everybody's been so kind and gracious. I was, I was talking with Pastor Wright and seeing some of the kids and it's so funny how the people here 
It doesn't matter if they're a different country or not. They're genuine. It's the, it's, <laughs> we have the same bad kids, same good kids. I mean, people are people no matter where you go. And they all, they're all craving something. And it's neat to know that we have the answer. We're trying to give it to them. So it's, uh, it's kind of a neat thing to see. Even though your different culture separate you, different race, different colors, they still want to be around God. They still are searching for something. It was an amazing week. It really was an amazing week.